Hey everybody. Well, um, so we're, we're going to go through a project today and I was taught by a man named Ricardo Iglesias. He really was uh, instrumental in me being able to figure out how to make this Mexican swivel Honda or popsicle Honda. So I just want to make sure that I give him credit before we get started here. So um, I just wanted to go quickly through the first part of it, which is um, for this project, and this project talking about the popsicle style Honda, and yes, I, I do know that it's a giant loop, but um, redoing it here. So anyways, to do this project, you're gonna need four strings that are about three feet long. You can probably get away with a little bit shorter, but I just cut them at three feet. Um, I leave as much depth as I can get to get an even depth across all my strings. And obviously that changes depending on where you take your strings from the, from the animal. But um, I cut mine at five sixteenths. At five sixteenths right in the beginning. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So I like to take an Allen wrench and use these. This is my 5 16 Allen wrench and then adjust my, my cutter to it. And then set it there, get it real nice and good. Tighten it down, go to cutting my strings. So I cut them and then I bevel them um, on all four corners. And then I've got them, after I do that, so I cut them into four pieces and then I take them and I'll soap them up really good. So I actually want them kind of a little bit more on the wetter side um, to get started braiding. Not so wet that you're gonna get gaps in your braid, but it seemed to be a little bit easier for me to keep my temper throughout the entire braid whenever I had them a little bit wetter in the beginning. So I'm letting these soak up the, the soap right now and then we'll come back here in a few minutes and we'll get to braiding. Okay, so now that our strings are all temp tempered up and everything, I find the middle of them. So these aren't exactly three feet each, but I'll get them about centered. Okay, so I think that's good. And then as far as, uh, let's say maybe go about three, three, maybe four inches off center. And that's what's where your uh, vice is going to clamp down. You just want to move off center just a tad bit um, so that your your round braid ends up being right in the center of your Honda and you've got enough on both sides to finish braiding the neck. Yeah, I know I got a kind of strange vice here, but just bear with me. That's going to make a horrible noise too, maybe. There it goes. Okay. Get it where they're all pretty well held down. And then this part, cross two over. Then I cross the left over the right. And then take this far left, come around and go over. And then outside, you're going to go behind between the two on the left and that's the start of our forced round ram bra round braid and then from there it's basically same exact thing repeated so go back to the left for this one back wrap it around the back and split the two on the right now I pull these down pretty tight so now we go back, take the back right, split the two on the left, and just continue this pattern. And we'll do this for hmm, probably about six inches or so. And then we'll come back after it's all braided and we'll explain what you gotta do next. All right, so I braided a little section of it. I don't necessarily think that's about six inches, but I do have, um, Sorry about that. I do have a, uh, a couple bottles right here that I'm gonna use to stretch the loop. And so 
these two are just, this one's slightly smaller, so I think this is what we'll be at. Um, and I'll use this to wrap my braid around, and once I get all the way around this one, uh, we'll join the four into the eight around the bolt. But I just wanted to show you, so I'll just take it at this point, wrap it around here. I'm still a little ways off, so I'll probably throw a few more braids in there and then call it good. All right, so now that we've braided our loop down, I just take this, close it down on this, and there's a little bit of a gap right there, but I'm, I'm okay with that because whenever we cut these into um, our smaller strands, I think it'll be a good size to go around this bottle here, which is a little bit bigger. So we'll just have to stretch it over it. So now that we're at this point, I take it and I'm gonna have to go back to the splitter. And then we're basically gonna take these. So as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, these are uh, 5 16 wide. And I'm gonna take these down and I'm gonna set my splitter to 5 30 seconds inches wide. And I'm just gonna lay that blade right in the center all the way up right against that braid, that last braid that we threw in. And then I'm just going to take it, cut all the way down it, and then just cut off one half of it. And so you'll still have one string coming out of here. So you'll still have eight total strands coming down. And then we'll use those strands to braid down the neck and then back up the neck. All right, so this is my 5.30 seconds Allen wrench. So I'm just going to use that to adjust my, my cutter here. A little bit too much. So I think about right there is perfect. So I double check everything. So I want it to be very mirrored um, whenever I join these all together. So like I'm talking about here. So this top one on both sides is coming out below that strand. So they look exactly the same on both sides. So that's what I want to end up with before I join these back together. Um, so... Now that I know I'm on the right sequence of braid, I just take these, I just kind of throw everything out of the way besides the one that I want to get. And then I don't start all the way up here. I actually will turn it around and get on top of this string and come all the way back to that braid. But I just take it, I use the sharp point on my razor. I just set it right there in the middle and then just run this through the rest of my razor. And then once I get to this point, now I just flip it back around and I'm going to place it back in the cutter. And so now I'm just going to continue up the back way until I get to about this point. So I'm really close to that other strand and I don't want to damage it at all. But now I'll just kind of turn it on my splitter and then I'll just keep using this or cutter, I keep calling it a splitter, but y'all got me. So then I'll just take it and I'll cut that piece off and it, if it really doesn't look good, like that doesn't look very good, I'll just move up a little bit higher on my blade to where I know I've got a nice sharp spot. And then if I'm really in a bad spot here, um, just need to find my other razor blade. Give me just one second. Okay, so come back here with my razor blade. But as you can see, this is kind of what we're aiming for. We want it to go all the way down there and then just get that last little bit off there. Okay. I probably could have came out a little bit better, but that's all right. So I'm just going to go through now and do all of these strings, cut them down to 530 seconds, and then we'll come back and bevel those two uh, sharp edges on our strings. And then we'll do that for every single one of them, and then come back at it here in a minute. All right, so after I got these strings cut down, now I just have to bevel those edges that we just 
cut and I don't really take too much off. I'm leaving quite a bit. I'm just knocking that sharp edge off really. So I just do that to all of the all of the eight strings that we cut. Now once we get these done, then we'll be ready to. I, I think the strings could probably use a little bit more soap, so we'll soap them up, let them case for maybe. 10-15 minutes with that soap on there just so it isn't so slick to to braid with right off the bat and then uh, get started on braiding so see you when we're braiding all right so let my strings temper up for about five to ten minutes so I know that's really not a lot but I just wanted to um, get a little bit more soap in them so they had a little bit more moisture so to start out with your so you've got both of these sides, so I make sure my braid is still good and tight and everything. Um, and then as you can see, like pretty much coming out of this last braid, everything is our 532nd size. So flip it around, just make sure everything is good to go on this other side as well. Same thing here, pretty much all the strings coming out are just the right size. So now we'll take these two on the right side that are on the left of the right side come here join them up with their pairs from the other side and then I just go ahead and do an over one under one pattern right off the bat so join those up and then just make sure to keep your other strands straight and flat so that you keep account of where they're at so I can walk this down a little bit and then since this strand is coming to my left, I know that I need to start on my right side. So I take this last strand here, wrap it around the back, and then I'm going to come under one, over one, under one, over one, and then join that back in my right hand. Just gotta make sure everything stays together. Okay, now we're gonna go from the left, so exact same thing. So it's gonna be a under one, over one, under one, over one. And that's the pattern we'll continue to use. So I'm gonna get these last two braided down, and then we will put this on our bolt. So once again, that was under one, over one, under one, over one. And then this last one is the one on my left coming around here. So same deal, under one, over one, under one, over one. So now that everything has been joined up, I'll put this on my bolt and then we'll kind of tighten this down and get it all um, squared up real quick. So bolt just goes right in here. And then just start pulling this sucker down. And it's kind of hard to do on your own because you got so many strings to manage, but I guess that's braiding. So I think the things that are really going to tighten it up are the third and fourth strands down here. So get those all straightened up and come back here and do the number one and two on this side. So make sure you, I know everything is getting all out of whack over here, but it'll end up being okay. So once I get it down about where I want it, remember that third strand will really help tighten it down. So, All right, so now it's kind of tightened down decently and it'll it'll continue to tighten down on us but now I'm just going to continue to braid another few over one under one over one patterns on here 
And then I will, oh, oops, sorry. Got a little mixed up there. Other side is next. Hold on a second. Make sure I got everything straightened up. Here we go. So I keep some, some spacing in here on these braids because we're going to have to do back braids on them. So I don't want to tighten everything down just too much. I want to leave a little bit of space there for, for my braids to be able to fit in. And like I mentioned before, um, before we got started with this project, this is a, this is over a 7 16 bolt. And so that's pretty hefty. Um, so I, I do think we're using just the right size string though on this project, the, the five thirty seconds. And I didn't actually calculate out the math, but I know you can do that. So for those of you that are really into doing all the math and everything associated with this, please be my guest and figure out what the size is really supposed to be. All right. So now once we get to this point, I feel like I've braided down a decent amount. Not super far, but actually, you know what? I'm just going to, just for the hell of it, I'm going to do one more on both sides just to see if I can get a little bit longer neck on here than what I got on my last one that I just braided. So now that we've gotten this, go ahead and tighten all your stuff down a fair amount, but remember to, to leave a little bit of slack in there since we're going to be back braiding here in just a second. Okay, so now that we've gotten however far down we want to get on our neck, now I just flip it over and then I'm going to take my strings that are on my right side and I'm going to use these to start my back braid first. So. I come here and I'm just going to go over this one that's coming out to the to the left. And I come here and I'm just going to follow that string up that's right next to it on its right side. And it's really helpful to have uh, have your strings pointed before you start this process. As I'm saying that, I'm having trouble getting this one in here. There we go. So then I just take this one all the way up, following the one on the on its right, all the way up. So we're basically creating pairs here. And now I'm going to run this one basically all the way up to the very start of the neck and that's where I'm gonna leave it and then all of them that are coming out on the same side or that are going in the same direction I'll end all of them at this same height and the reason for that is because they're all gonna make my four strand Spanish ring button so now we've got this pair all the way down here so now I'm going to go, since it was one from the right, I'm going to go to the next one on the right. So I'm going to come here, pull it back to the same, same height as this one. And then I'm going to go over one again. Hold on one second. Ah, sorry, I was looking on the wrong side of it. So I'm going to go over this one and then follow this one on its right again, just like I did the last time. Sorry about that.
I'm not too worried about getting these all pulled down just yet. So like I said, I'm going to come up here, follow the one on the right, all the way up to the top of the neck. And I can check out the other string that I just put up here, make sure that we're in the same general area. So make sure your string lays in there flat and straight. Okay, perfect. So now they're both coming out in the same area. So now I turn it back over, go back one more, pull it out from under that cross. And then I'm gonna follow this one on the right up. So basically we're just making pairs with all the four that came out of the right side. And I've heard that this is the same as, as like your uh, nose button. Um, I personally haven't done uh, a project like a Bozal yet or even a set of reins. And so uh, I'm unfamiliar with that territory, I guess. But if this is the same way, then if you know how to do those things, you should be able to figure this one out pretty easily. Like I said, I'm not worried about everything being sucked down real tight just yet. All right, we're on our last one from this side. Pull this one out. And then it's going to go I think my filmmaker is getting tired, so I need to hurry it up. Don't get yourself in a hurry. Okay, so now I've got all my pairs running that direction. So now I kind of pull down on them a little bit. So now, and then I'll pull back on these as well, tighten these down a little bit. All right, so now these that are coming out here, we're just gonna crown them. Oh, give me one second. a mistake here before I continue on make sure I fix this let's see if I even can fix it I imagine I can There we go. Okay, 
now they're all coming out in the same area, the same direction. Okay, so now I take these and I'm just going to crown them in the direction that they're going. So one over the next one in line, and then once you get to the last one, let's take it to that first loop you created. Now tighten these all down. And these are now going to go in the opposite direction, or actually they're in the same direction, I guess, but it's just getting our bottom here to look good. All right, so now I'm going to take this and I'm going to run it up. And if I'm if I still have the Honda in the same orientation, I'm going to run up with that on my left hand side. But if I flip it around, it'll be on the right hand side. So I'm going to flip it around just because I think it'll be easier for me to work. So now we're going to go up and we're going to split our pairs. So split this first pair here and then split this second pair. And then we're going to do this all the way up. So over two, under two. I'm trying not to get too rough with my fid. I don't want to damage all my strings. I am kind of pulling these down decently tight. Actually, so now that I'm getting to this spot, I am actually realizing that I probably need to still go uh, over one, under one with all of these strings that we went up with the first time. And this is okay if you get to this point and need to move these up. But the reason why I'm going to move them up is because of uh, doing these Spanish ring knots here in just a minute. Um, we're going to do two to finish the Honda off with and those two can't be coming out in the same area. So I just take these, I'm gonna get them on to where they finish on different planes in the braid. That string was trying to turn around on me. Okay, so now that's the one that we just worked. So let me go over one under one again, and I'll come out right there. Okay, so now, let me take you back around and show you what we just did. So that one, take that one out of the picture, take that one out of the picture too. So these, hold on a minute. Is it? I think I gotta do one right here. So I think this one is part of this ordeal. So I'm gonna go over one, under one here. Sorry, I know I'm not. I'm not really saying this super well. There we go. So now all four of these strands up top are coming out on the same plane, in the same area on the braid. So now I can finish this one. The one that we were just working on, I can go back over two, under two, all the way up to this point in the braid. And that's going to be on a different plane so that I can uh, do my two Spanish ring buttons up kind of high up on the neck. So there we go. Great, so now I just go back down here and I just continue the same thing. So I just move backwards one. So over two, under two. Sorry, once it gets to this point, it gets kind of tight. 
then it gets a little bit more difficult to work your strings through there. Over two, under two. This is being a bugger for me. Kind of ruined the end of my string here. Probably would be best to just go cut it off. Oh, there we go, finally got it. So remember keeping that one that you're following up on the right side This is kind of being a pain on me. I might have needed to get some smaller strands again or not to pull them down so tight there in the beginning. So uh, learn from my mistake. <laughs> don't pinch it or don't uh, suck your strings down too tight in the beginning there. So after I came up with those other ones, that was not good. All right, so I just continue this with these last two. Over two, under two. And then we'll come back whenever we tie the, the ring buttons. Okay. So now that we've gotten to this point, point and we've done our pineapple button, basically, uh, all the way up. Like I said, you want four strings coming out on the same plane. So if I go around here, they're all coming out basically the exact same area. Um, so we'll take these four strands, and then we'll crown knot. So over the one next to it, over the one next to it, and then over that one. And then we'll try to keep these tight as we go. So go ahead, pull one down, and then jump to the next one in front of it. So now we crown back up. So we go under the one next to it. Keep it out of the way. Under the next one. Keep it out of the way. Under the next one. Keep it out of the way and then we come back here and we go back under the first one that we started so kind of pull these down again and that strand should be coming out before or on the left side of the one coming back out So now we're going to go over one, which is where this one's coming out, and then we're going to go under two. So we're going to come back in right here. And it actually tends to work out a little bit better if you go backwards this way. So now we'll go back to this one, so over one and then under two. So this is that second one that we just braided. So move back, do the same exact thing. So over one there, and then under our two right here. 
And then this last one is actually this one right here. So this one will now be over two and then under two. So over one, two, and under two right here. So now that we've done that, now we can go around and pull these down pretty tight. And I have my, uh, I've got my pliers over here because I really want to crank down on this thing. But, okay, now to finish it off, we go over this one and then back up under here and come out right underneath this one. I'll work backwards again. So now we'll come over one and then under two. So over, actually I guess it's over two and then under two. This last one it's this one right here so once again it goes over two then under two sorry one second So now I'll go around and just really tighten this one down with my pliers. So I go around and I do that a few times until I feel like I've gotten pretty much most of the slack out of, out of this ring knot. Just about there. So, getting mighty close. All right. Now, once I get it to this point, then I'll take. Um, I don't usually do my rub stick just yet, but I'm just trying to get that to lay down a little flatter. That's the only one that looks like it's. Got a little bit of trouble there but anyway so once you get it to where you want it and you think your ring button looks good I just take these I take a little pair of clippers these are cuticle clippers but I don't want to snip it just too short and especially because I know these bite in and they kind of go down but um, just like that <laughs> so these are really dull so just kind of bear with me while I chomp at them there we go. So I just go around and do this on every single one of these. So now that we've gotten those all done, now I just take my little rub stick and I just 
kind of smooth over these. Let's kind of get it to be a little smoother and lay nicely. After you're satisfied with this ring button, how it ends up looking, then we can move on to the second one, which as you can see, these strings are coming out right below it. So it makes this second ring button sit right up against that, uh, that second one. So we'll do the exact same thing, but this is going to run in the other direction. So once again, crown all these strings, make sure they're laying the appropriate way. And go ahead and pull these down pretty tight. Then we're going to crown them up. So they're just crowned down. Now we're going to crown up in that same direction. So under the one next to it, hold it out of the way. Under the one next to it, hold it out of the way. Under that one, hold it out of the way. And come back here and go right back under it. Tighten those down just a little bit. I'm cutting it real close here with some of these strings. This one especially. This one is very, very short, so I'm really hoping that I can make it and make it work. So over one, then under two. So this one will be the, the one that I'm holding out of the way right now will be the second one. Oh boy, that's going to be tough. So now over one, under two. Over one, under two. Because remember to go backwards. And then this one is going to be over two, under two. So now that we've gotten to this point, now we'll pull all these down fairly well. I'm going to have to grab this one with my pliers, because otherwise I can't even get a hold of it. There we go. Now we'll start out with this one. So this one's going to be over this one and then under two. So this will be the second one. So we need it to come right under there and up through here. Oh boy, there we go. Oh, well, we got it. Okay, so move backwards. So go over one, under two. Over one, under two. The last one is going to be over two now because you got that one that just came up. So there, right here. And that should be the end of our second Spanish ring button, which means that we can just pull these down nice and tight and that this Honda will be done. So if you give me just a second, we'll get all this stuff pulled down. Oh, shoot. Sorry, honey. Don't do that. <laughs> well, try not to do it. <laughs> Luckily, I didn't hit her. Otherwise, I don't think she'd still be filming. time. Okay. 
So I think that's about good enough. So fold these up, get them ready to cut. So once again, leave a little bit of length there. But if you're braiding dry enough, I don't think you should really have to, but I just do it as a, as a precaution. I really don't want one of these things coming undone on me. Just go through this with my rub stick. Push those little ends down. So that's about it. And then we'll see if it fits. So we made it a certain size to see if we could fit it over this. And oh boy, I don't know that it's going to fit. I think maybe if we had this taken out. May fit on it okay. Let me just try to stretch it out just a tiny bit, a little, just. So I think that's going to be the perfect size if I can get it to fit around this thing. Let's see if I can get this thing to sit down in here. Just right. I thought I was about to have to say, well, don't take it from me. Don't, don't take this bolt out of here. Okay. Actually, one of the things I might do is use this fid kind of use it as a little bit of a pry bar on the flat part of it. Nope, that's not going to work. I can put it on the ground. It's firmer. Yeah, maybe so. There we go. She had the idea. So I put it on something firm. <laughs> All right, so now, now that we got it over our pill bottle here, now I'm just going to let it dry just like this. And uh, then we'll come back and lace the Honda on once everything's good to go. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Please let me know if you have any questions or need a little bit better explanation on any part of this that I wasn't clear on. Happy braiding.